After finishing this video, you would have learned to use ray casting to detect trackable planes and obtain their hit position. And also, you'll see how to create the anchor points at the hit location. So, let's get started. Okay, so here we have our Unity project open. So, let's go ahead and duplicate our sample scene and call this as anchors. Open it up and let's get rid of the queue. Now the first thing that we want to do here is to select the XR origin and add a component called as AR Raycast Manager. Now you can think of Raycasting as something like shooting a laser from your phone and it's gonna go and hit some point and gather information for you. Now that is taken care by the AR Raycast Manager and then we need another component called as AR Anchor Manager. So this is going to manage all the anchors. Uh, at the end of the video I'll tell you what exactly the use of anchors are but for now let's add this. Then go back to your assets and let's create a new folder called as scripts. Open it up and let's create a new script called as anchor creator. Double click to open it and I will see you in Visual Studio. Alright, so here we are in Visual Studio. First, let's get rid of this code over here and add the library that we need, which is going to be using Unity Engine dot Next, we'll declare the variables to store the AR Raycast Manager and the AR uh, Anchor Manager. So for that, we'll type it as private AR Raycast Manager. We'll call it as Raycast Manager. Similarly, we'll create another variable which is private AR Anchor Manager and we'll call this as Anchor Manager. Next, we're going to declare variables to store the Raycast hit. So when we use Raycast, it's going to hit and provide some information. So we need a variable to store that. Also, we need a variable to store the position on which the Raycast has been hit. So for that, we'll create a private list of Raycast hits. We'll name the variable as hits. And let's instantiate it as well. And then let's create a variable to store the post, which is going to be private post. We'll call this as hit post. And finally, we need a variable that can reference a game object that has to be instantiated. In our case, it's an anchor that has to be placed once you once it hits a surface. So for that, we're going to create a serialized field, private game object. And let's call this as anchor prefab. Next, we want to reference these two variables when the game starts. So for that, we'll use the start method. And in here, we'll type it as Raycast Manager is equal to get component AR Raycast Manager. Similarly, Anchor Manager is going to be get component AR Anchor Manager. Now, since we are using the get component method, it means that these two components have to be on the same game object. So to make sure that it's always present, we'll use the required component type of and let's call it as AR Raycast Manager. Similarly, the other required component is going to be Anchor Manager. Okay, so the next step would be to get the touch position when we touch our screen and then shoot a Raycast from there and store the information. Now, this has to be done in the update method. So let's type it as update. And here we first check if the touch count is more than zero. So for that, we type if input dot touch count greater than zero. Then we want to get the first touch. So for that, we'll type it as touch. Touch is going to be equal to input dot get touch at zero. Now, once we have the first touch position, we want to make sure that it's the touch position during the pick and phase and not after you lifted your finger, which is the cancel phase. And there are other phases in between as well. So to make sure of that, we type it as if the touch dot phase is equal to touch phase dot began only then we want to get the touch position and shoot the raycast from there so for that we need to type it as raycast manager dot raycast we need to give a touch position which is going to be touch dot position and then this is going to return the result and we need to store that result in a variable which we already created here called as hits so let's put that here all right now, there's one more thing that we want to do here actually to see if this is true. So say imagine you touch something and it does not hit any trackable plane. It does not touch a vertical or a horizontal plane, but just an arbitrary point. In such a case, there is no hits that is generated. So only if this is true, then we want to create an anchor. So for that, we will type if. Let us cut this whole thing. Paste it in here. There we go. So if this is true, only if the Raycast hit provides a hit, only if it is true, 
Only then we want to handle the raycast heads. So it means that we are going to create another method which is going to be private void and let's call this as handle raycast hits and in here we need to pass in the list of hits. Now there are a lot of things that you can do inside this method. For example, if you are tracking an image or a plane then you need to first check if the raycast is hitting an image or a plane. If it is a plane then you can do something, if it is an image then you can do something else. Now just to keep it really simple, we are going to see if the raycast is hitting a plane. If it is hitting a plane, then we are going to create an anchor object, as simple as that. So for that, the statement is going to be if the hits. So we want to get the first hit and not the rest of them. So if the hits at zero dot trackable is AR plane, then we want to get the position in which it has hit the AR plane. So we need to use the variable hit pose is going to be equal to the hits at zero dot posts and then we need to create the anchors so let's write another method which is also going to be private void we'll call this as create anchor and this method is going to instantiate the game object that we provide over here so we'll type it as instantiate let's pass in the game object which is the anchor prefab the position is going to be hit post dot position and the rotation is going to be hit post dot rotation Right now we're just instantiating the game object but it's not an anchor. To make it an anchor you need to add the AR anchor component to it. So for that we need to first assign a variable to this. So we'll call this as anchor object and then all we need to do is type it as anchor object dot add component AR anchor. Okay so now that we have the methods ready let's go ahead and replace the text over here to handle raycast hits. There we go. And then we need to pass in the hits as well. So it's going to be hit. And here let's change this to create time. Alright, so that's about it. Now we can save the script and let's get back into Unity. Alright, so here we are back in Unity. Now I can select the XR origin game object. Add the anger creator script to this. We need to create the anger prefab. So let's create that. Let's right click in the hierarchy. Create an empty game object. We'll call this as anger prefab. Inside this, let's right click and create a cube. Scale the cube to 0.01 in all the directions and we want to reduce it in Z and X axis. So let's uh, make it to 0.02 and 0.02 and then we want to bring it slightly up as well. So 0.05, there we go. This is going to be the Y axis. Similarly, we need to duplicate them and make this into X and Z. Alright, so we have all the three axes. Now let's create a material and add them. So green is going to be for the Y axis, blue is going to be the Z axis and red is going to be the X axis. So to create a material, we can right click on our asset folder. We can create material. I'll call this as Y axis. Let's select the color as T. Similarly for X and Z axis as well. Now to add the material, just select it, drag and drop it into the respective game objects. And now finally, we can select this game object, drag and drop it into our prefabs folder, delete it from the hierarchy, select the XR origin and drag the anchor prefab inside the anchor creator script. And finally, let's add the AR plane manager so that the planes can be detected and our Raycast manager can hit the AR planes and detect it. And let's not forget to add the AR default plane to this as well. And that's about it. So now we can save the scene. Make sure you have connected your device to your uh, machine. Click on File, Build Settings. Add the open scene. Click on Build and Run. Let's name the app as Anchors and click on Save. Alright, so here I have my build ready. Let's go and test it out. So here I'm going to scan my table. There we go. And now when I touch on it, I'm, I'm able to place the anchors as you can see here. Now if you are wondering what's the difference between an AR anchor and just placing an object in your scene, well you need to know that the AR anchors are updated as and when the device refines the scene understanding. So when you scan your environment, the mesh could change or something could be dynamic. So when you have an AR anchor that gets updated as well. If you just place an object irrespective of how the environment changes, the object will retain its position. So that's the importance of AR anchors. Alright, so that's it for this video and I will see you in the next one.